Next question is from BJ Ben Johnson. You guys often push to achieve performance goals over aesthetic goals. What are some performance goals that I could focus on achieving, such as greater mobility or strength goals? So we, we talk a lot about performance goals because being performance-minded tends to, not always, but it tends to lead to healthier exercise practices, mm -hmm. okay? Now, I say tends to because you can also make performance goals become unhealthy when you become obsessed. Yeah. You try and PR everything. Every, yeah, just strength all the time. I need to get faster all the time, and then you end up injuring yourself. But if you're smart about it, Performance goals are a great way to move away from being body image obsessed. In fact, that was my number one strategy when I would have a client who struggled with body image, somebody who you know weighed themselves all the time and always looked in the mirror and you know had a terrible relationship with themselves and with exercise. I would often tell them, don't weigh yourself anymore. Uh, don't look in the mirror and check your body out. Um, let's just focus on performance. And it typically would help move them into a, a healthier practice. Uh, the easiest thing to measure for performance, of course, is strength. This is a very easy one. Am I stronger than I was last week? The downside of that is that that is not linear and it's not forever. You can't forever increase your strength. Mm -hmm. At some point, I mean, if that were the case, uh, everyone in this room would be bench pressing, you know, five thousand pounds by this point, right? Um, I it's, wish. I know. At some point it stops and you end up getting plateaus and it's not like a consistent, but strength is a good one because it's objective. It's easy to measure. There it is. Uh, mobility is another great one. Can I go lower in the squat and with good stability? Um, can I do this shoulder press with better, more upright posture? Can I do this exercise that normally would bother me, but now I feel like I have control and stability in it? Mobility is great because it always treats you well. Um, as long as you don't get obsessed with flexibility, that's when you can get problems. Because remember, mobility is control and strength within flexibility. Um, so those are those are both really good ones. Well, strength is uh, the, the I think the most common one, right? Just in, add more load, but uh, it's not. It's definitely not even my favorite. And I had this. So this weekend, I had my family up, right? And we were all we all got a workout in one day, and you know I had my uh, my mom's uh, new husband and my sister's uh, husband, so my brother in law were there, and they they've you know intermittently listened to the podcast, and they have some of the programs, and they were like they had never had any one on one coaching for deadlifting and squatting from me. And they really wanted that. Like, can we just go to the garage and like can you critique my deadlift and talk to me? And so. You know, we spent like a couple hours in there just like really breaking down the deadlift. And, you know, they felt that like they made like this huge improvement just from the the little bit of coaching that we had spent time with. And then, like, okay, well, and we were messing with like 135 is what we were deadlifting with, which is, you know, both of them are pretty strong guys. It's relatively easy. And they're like, you know, so, you know, should we add more weight to the bar or when should we do that? I said, no, there's so many other ways for us to progressively overload before you just start adding weight. And so I talked to them about tempo. I talked to them about isometrics. I talked to them about speed. I said, stay at this weight for several months. I mean, discipline yourself to do what we, what I, the, the, the rep range and the tempo that I'm talking to you about right now for like at least a month, a month and a half. And then when you feel like that's become really easy, then let's slow down the, the tempo really, really slow. Mm -hmm. And then when you feel like that that's become really easy, then let's work on speed in that. So now you're like three, four months down. You're still at the same exact weight, 135, which you think is still easy for you. But there's other things that you can work on. And so I was telling them about like the movement of it. Like do not look at exercises like, oh, I can do it. So now let's add more weight. You should have a desire to want to make it beautiful and perfect. Like this was what uh, I, I used to love to when I, when I was a trainer and working out next to like some dude that I saw like muscling weight up and I'd come over, especially when I was like lean and shredded and my stringer and shit like that looking all cool. Right. And I walk over and I would take like a quarter of the weight the person was moving and just move it slow and controlled mm -hmm. and get this great workout. It was a great way for me to attract new clients because people would be like, what, how do you look like this? And you move this light of weight. And I said, because it doesn't, it's not all about weight all the time. Mm -hmm. It's not always about adding more load to the bar work on, on the movement and work on perfecting it and making it look perfect, that in itself will take you a long time to mm -hmm. get, especially movements like the squat, like the deadlift, like the overhead press, like the bench press. I'm still working on that, you know, 20 years later of exercise. Like, so instead of always thinking about, 
either one, how you look in the mirror, or two, how strong it is. You know, try and get great at the movement. Yeah, Absolutely. I also I love that, and uh, that that kind of reiterates what I was going to bring up, which is more of the unconventional side, um, which uh, I. I love the Turkish getup for the fact that it's so technical. There's so many different aspects uh, that you have to master just to be able to perform it correctly and then to then sharpen everything to make it look pretty. And so to it's it's the ultimate way to get your body to communicate in unison. And so uh, that's one of those exercises performance-wise uh, if – you think you've mastered some of these like compound lifts, which I doubt. Uh, that's something that too to add into the mix to really then challenge uh, your body in a completely different way uh, to make sure that your movement is is just superior. It's on par. You're you're able to uh, express all the strength that you've acquired uh, correctly and be able to manage it so you're not overdoing it on one side. You're not over rotating. You're not compensating anywhere. It's going to expose all those things. The other one was. Uh, a windmill and so th th this is because you know personally it's my passion to to bring to light the fact that you need to rotate you need uh to rotate especially in your spine and your shoulders you know you need to be able to express these joints to to rotate or you lose that ability that creates problems it creates arthritis creates pains uh and that's going to limit your performance in every other direction so if you're going to if you're going to neglect that aspect of movement you're going to suffer the consequences yeah, I, I also like to uh, include in performance the feel. I know that's not a traditional thing that we consider when we think about performance, but you can continue to challenge how an exercise feels. So I'm doing this right now. I've, I've slowed down my repetitions. I'm making sure to do a four or five second negative, and I'm also pausing at the squeeze. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to feel the target muscle more than I did the previous workout. So even though I'm like stronger and like I can add weight, no, I'm going to see if I can do the same amount of reps I did last time, but feel it more, feel it in the muscle more. So this is more of a bodybuilding performance uh, measure, I would say, but it's a really, really good one. Um, and you can have a lot of fun with it. The carryover from being able to feel and exercise more is tremendous. It's absolutely, especially if you're trying to build your body in particular ways. If you can slow, for example, your squat down and squeeze your glutes and connect your glutes more, and rather than adding weight, you know, because here's the temp, the, the, the temptation is, you know, last week I did eight reps with X amount of weight. This week, uh, wow, eight reps feels easy. I can add weight. Instead of doing that, you know what I'm going to do? Next set, I'm going to see if I can make eight reps feel just as hard as it did last week by squeezing and stretching and connecting to the muscles even more. That's the challenge. Can I make it 12 weeks without adding a pound to my weight, even though I get stronger, simply by changing the feel of the exercise and making it feel more difficult? I, I don't know if it's like the trainer in me, so I don't know if you guys agree with this or not, but when, I, when I'm when i inside a gym and there's lots of people working out, I'm always drawn to somebody who I just, when I see them moving like the weight like beautifully, like that's more impressive to me mm -hmm. than somebody who's got more weight on the bar than I can lift. Mm. If I look over at somebody and I'm like, oh, damn, that squat or that deadlift just looks clean. I mean, it just looks perfect. There's no breakdown anywhere. They could be doing that with moderate to light weight, and I'm more impressed with that than just seeing somebody muscle up a crazy weight that maybe I can't even lift. Like, that's not – there's some people that are just gifted and naturally strong. That they first time they touched a bar, they were already up to bench pressing over 300. I have a little cousin like this. I remember when he came to work at the gym for me when he's 17 years old, and the little fucker was bench pressing more than I had bench pressed after eight years of lifting. <laughs> you know, and it's so insulting. Yeah, it is right. And it's, it's so there's people that are just gifted. They're just they're they're strong, or their body type works really well with movement. So sometimes it can lift really good weight. But it takes years of practicing a movement, especially a compound movement that's complex or like a Turkish get-up, like Justin said. If I see someone doing a windmill or a Turkish get-up and it looks flawless, they could have 10 pounds over their head, and yeah, I'm impressed. Definitely. Like That movement, to do it really smooth and perfect, is you know that person has put in a lot of time and work to perfect that, and that to me is more impressive than the person who just lifts, you know, 50% more than the person next to him. Yeah, that, no, that ain't I, a big deal. I'm with you on that. I still get impressed by a lot of weight, but yeah, the form stuff. I remember uh, training a, a gymnast once and she was doing leg raises. And, you know, when people do a leg raise, right, they pick their legs out and then you have to tuck the tailbone, kind of do that river scrunch. 
She, when she did the leg raise, her toes were pointed, feet together, and she just folded up so nicely into this massive, like, rever- but real control. I remember yeah. looking at me like, man, I need you to teach me how to do that. <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah. 